Okay, real talk. How scared should we actually be about you know who? Oh no! Someone peed in my pants! This is not my party. Brought to you by The Bulwark. This week, there's been a rash of news stories from people who desperately want America to care about the threat of Trump. You need to wake up. Neoconservative scholar Robert Kagan wrote, A Trump dictatorship is increasingly inevitable. David Frum, a George W. Bush speechwriter, wrote in The Atlantic that if Trump wins, our government would cease to function. And Liz Cheney is on a book tour where she raised the alarm that if Trump is elected, he would never leave. She said it may be the last election you ever vote in. The vote for Donald Trump may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. I have some concerns. Now let's just appreciate that these aren't a bunch of resistance libs and pink pussy hats talking about how fascism is coming. These are titans of old line conservatism. And by the way, they're just echoing what Trump's own staff is saying they plan to do. Subvert norms, dismantle the rule of law, and use the levers of government to exact vengeance against their political enemies. A dictatorship masquerading as a democracy. Before every election, we hear the old cliche that this is the most important of our lifetime. But never before have prominent people legitimately argued that it could be the last election of our lifetime. So yeah, this is different. Yeah, that sounds really bad. This probably leaves most of you with two questions. One, how scared do we really need to be? And two, how do we convince people in our lives that don't recognize the threat to wake up? Well, to answer question one, pretty fucking scared. Zombie apocalypse and end of America? Probably not, but there are certain horrible things we know would happen. Trump and his friends would act lawlessly with no consequence. Their political opponents would be targeted. There would be unprecedented domestic terror threats from emboldened MAGA radicals and probably some extremists who oppose Trump. Immigrants would go through hell. Ukraine would be fucked. And the Western alliance that has undergirded almost a century of peace and prosperity might just break. People in the military would be given illegal and immoral orders to target citizens. And yeah, Trump would at least try to stay in power. Again. That's terrifying. So yeah, pretty bad. But then after that, does he become a dictator? Is he Hitler? Well, I don't know about all that. Trump does have a pathological need for affirmation. Would you please like me? Another election would have to happen in four years. People would likely hate him even more then than they do now. So there could be a long, painful path out. You can imagine a tiny ray of hope if you really squint. But the fact that I can't say it with certainty, that there's even a small chance that the worst could come to pass, is just not worth the risk. Don't even think about it. Which takes us to number two. Studies are showing that a lot of people are tuning this stuff out. So all of us need to communicate to the tuner outers in our lives. Not with judgment, not with paranoid Hitler comparisons, but with persistence and logic and facts about the threat in front of us. I can't wait for goddamn Christmas. Certain groups, like young progressives mad about what's happening in Israel, will respond to certain arguments. And different groups, like dads who read the Wall Street Journal, will respond to different arguments. I'll try to provide examples Examples and information that could reach everybody in the year ahead. That would be helpful. But let's just start here for the dads. If a godfather in neoconservatism and George W. Bush's speechwriter and the daughter of Dick Cheney, who's a pretty staunch conservative in her own right, all think that there's even a chance that electing Trump makes the government that undergirds our capitalist system collapse, maybe you should heed their warnings and just recognize that Trump is not a risk worth taking. Fool me twice, shame on me. See you next week for more Not My Party. For more episodes of Not My Party, smash that subscribe button. And scan right here to subscribe on Snapchat, where you can get the episodes first and all the Not My Party content you desire.